I go camping with my dad every summer. He's done it his whole life, and recently I've gotten into it as well. I'm 16, and last year my dad and I went out on our seasonal camping trip. We found the spot online together while looking for a new camping area to try out for the summer. There's no pictures of the area, but the map was easy to follow, and the description of the trail was that it was easy and uncrowded. We set out on Friday morning, parking on the side of the road and beginning down the trail. After the first quarter mile, it was clear that the description wasn't very accurate. It was pretty steep in some parts, and a lot of the trail was muddy or overgrown, which made it actually really hard. Already being there though, we just pushed through and eventually got to the campsite. It looked no different than the woods on the trail that we had been walking on for the past two hours. There were trees everywhere, and just a plot of overgrown grass to set our stuff up on. No cool views or anything. We pitched our tents and made lunch. My dad was a bit of a talker, so the rest of the day we were just in conversation. Once the sun was starting to set, we walked around the trees near the campsite and collected some dry sticks to make a fire with. In the middle of us talking though, we were interrupted by a loud voice behind us. We both stopped talking and spun around. The woods were suddenly quiet again, and we didn't see anyone there. It sounded not too far away though, like maybe a mile out. Neither of us said anything for 30 seconds, just staring at the trees and trying to spot any movement. Then it came again. Someone, a man's voice, yelling. It sent chills through me. There was a pain and harshness to the scream, like they were in trouble. I looked up at my dad, who looked really conflicted and worried. He turned me around and led me back to the campsite, quickly starting the fire. The screams kept coming though, and eventually I asked my dad if we should help them. I could tell my dad was thinking of every option. He faced me and told me to stay by the fire and wait. His face was serious, and he said he was going to run a little ways toward the voice and just see what he could see, and that if I saw anyone, to not let them near me. I agreed and watched him run toward the man's voice. After a minute, he was out of sight. Honestly, I wasn't sure what I would have done if I were in my dad's shoes. Leaving someone in need of serious help would make me feel horrible, but we were also in the middle of the woods, so if something happens, well, I don't know. After 10 minutes, I started to get a little worried. The sun felt like it was dropping fast, and there was still no sign of my dad. But then, suddenly, the screaming stopped. The whole forest was now quiet again. I wondered if my dad had found him and was helping him, or if something else happened. Still, after another ten minutes, my dad was nowhere in sight. With the blanket of darkness starting to cover the forest, I grew more and more nervous. I stood up and walked a little bit away from the campsite and toward where my dad had gone. There were still no signs of him, so I walked a little more, and then, finally, I heard footsteps from up ahead. I still couldn't see anything, but as the sound of his steps started getting closer and closer, an eerie, almost disturbing feeling came over me. Then, just before I thought they would come into my sight, a voice to my left called my name. It was my dad running toward me and yelling at me to go back. There was urgency and worry in his voice, so I hurried to the campsite and my dad followed behind me. He quickly packed the essentials into his backpack. 
The look on my dad's face is something I still remember vividly. It was complete fear and distraught. We left the tents and ran for the first mile, then fast walked back to our car. On the drive home, I asked him what he saw out there, who the man was, and why he was screaming. My dad said nothing. Even to this day, he never brings it up or says anything of what he saw. Every time I so much as mention that day, his entire demeanor changes and his face falls flat. So I just stopped asking. All I can think about now is those footsteps that I heard walking toward me and what would have happened if my dad hadn't shown up in time. I was with my two college friends doing a weekend camping trip in the woods near us. I'll use different names for their privacy, so I'll call them Ryan and Jamie. Ryan and I aren't experienced in outdoor activities, so it was Jamie leading us through it all. He had a small spot by the river that he led us to. It was a couple miles through the woods, but there was a huge field just on the edge of the river that we would set up camp at. When we got there, nobody else was there. We set everything up right in the middle of the field, between the woods and the river, then brought out the beers and sat around the campfire. A little while after getting there, I happened to see some people out by the tree line. They looked like hunters, having dirty clothes and backpacks, like they were blending into the woods, but I didn't see any rifles. They were pretty far though, so maybe I just couldn't see them. I pointed them out to my friends, but Jamie had a puzzled look. He said hunting in these woods was illegal, and it wasn't even hunting season anyway. He seemed really concerned that they were out here. Ryan joked that he was taking it too seriously, and we went back to our random conversations. A few more hours later, we agreed to call it a night. The sun had been down for a while at this point, and the hike had really worn us out. We all went into our tents, but not being used to it, I found it really hard to fall asleep. Something about being out in the open, in a tiny tent, and laying on a thin blow-up mattress just had me feeling off. I must have laid there for a whole two hours, and at that point, I was just hoping I could at least get a few hours of sleep. But then something instantly made me wide awake. Footsteps coming toward our tents. At first I thought it had to be Ryan or Jamie, probably coming back from using the bathroom, but I swear I would have heard them unzipping their tent and walking out. Only a few seconds later though, I realized there were more than just one set of footsteps. There were two or three, maybe even more, all walking in a line. I looked at the thin wall of my tent, thinking I should be able to see their lights coming toward us, but there weren't any lights at all. Surely whoever was out there had to have seen our tents set up in the middle of an open field, and nobody in their right mind would just walk past us like this. I didn't know what to do though, I just pretended to be asleep quietly listening to them getting closer. The line of people came probably just a few feet from us, walking right past our tents. As soon as they were far enough away, I quietly unzipped my tent and looked out. Just when I did, Ryan unzipped his tent too. We both looked at each other with alarmed faces, then looked out at the group. They were barely visible, but definitely still walking away. I slipped out of my tent and opened Jamie's, waking him up. Both of us explained what happened, and surprisingly, he seemed even more horrified than either of us, likely because he'd been camping plenty of times and knew how odd this was. 
we started packing up our stuff, feeling way too uneasy to stay the rest of the night. While packing, Jamie suddenly told us with a shaky voice to hurry. We looked up at him, then followed his gaze. In the tree line, the group of what now looks like five or six people were standing and looking over at us. My adrenaline was pumping now, and I shoved everything into my bag, and we all sprinted for the trail. We left our lights off to hopefully not be seen, so the rest of the walk we were barely able to see anything. Luckily we made it back, but what that group is doing out there is unknown. Based on everything though, I don't think our encounter with them was any sort of accident. I was out camping in a familiar part of the forest near my city. My city is small and honestly has not much to do, so camping is the one thing I found that I really enjoy doing. I'm not a big fan on hiking though. I prefer the more relaxing aspects of camping, like sitting by a fire and having no responsibilities. The trail I went on was one I'd been to plenty of times. It was only a 30-ish minute walk from the parking area, and the campsite was right by a lake. Having only my small city near the forest, there's only so many people that could possibly be camping at the same time and place as I was. But this time when I got there, a man had a tent already set up. I could see him down by the lake, walking in the sand. He looked like he was in his 40s. He had some generic swimming shorts on and a stained white t-shirt. I walked a little further from where his tent was, then set up mine. I then collected some large stones from nearby and placed them in a ring, prepping for the campfire I was going to have later. As I did, I noticed the man looking at me. Not just like a glance though. He was standing down by the lake, with his body turned completely toward me, and was watching me. I tried to ignore it, but every time I looked back, he was in that same spot and still staring at me. It got really creepy, so I ended up waving at him to see if he was maybe wanting to say hi or something. But after I waved, he turned around and continued walking along the lake. Whatever that was, I didn't like it. It gave me an uncomfortable feeling about that guy, so I tried to keep an eye on him. For a while, nothing else really happened, but after 20 minutes, he walked away from the lake and into the forest behind his tent. I thought there might have been a trail back there, or he could have just been walking around, but whatever the case, I was just glad he was gone for now. I put my chair down by the lake and relaxed. I was down there for an hour or so before picking my chair back up and moving it back to my tent. The sun was setting, so I lit up my campfire. As I sat there and looked around at the forest, I suddenly spotted something. Far out, there was a shape next to one of the trees. I squinted, trying to get a clearer view. All I could make out was what looked like a white shirt. It was that guy again, and he was just standing far behind my campsite and staring in my direction. Now this was getting really creepy. How long was he watching me for? I moved my chair to the other side of the campfire so that I was now facing him just so I didn't lose sight of him. He stayed there for a good 30 or 40 minutes, watching me from far out in the forest, before it started to get dark out. The shadows everywhere started making it hard to see him anymore, and after a while, I couldn't even make out his shape. I could only look in the general direction he was in. Yet with my campfire lighting up my sight, I knew he could still see me. 
Knowing he was still out there staring at me, yet not being able to see anything, I started getting really anxious. I mean, what the hell was this guy doing? He had a tent here, like he was camping, but in the hours that I'd been here, I never once saw him go to it. With everything getting to my head, I debated packing up and leaving, but at this point, I was worried the guy would follow me out. So, I sat there and tended the fire, making sure it didn't go out, and I just waited. Several long, tiring hours passed, and I didn't see anything. He never came back to his tent, or came close enough for me to see him. When the sun started coming up, I looked all around and saw no signs of him. I packed up my gear and booked it back to my car. It's hard to know that guy's intentions. If I hadn't stayed awake and been cautious of him from the start, who knows where I'd be right now.